Keith Kelly, Director of Athletics Communication here alongside head women's basketball coach Drew Gang on our first ever uh, Hendricks Coaches Show of the 2019 year. Got a new, uh, br whole new year, whole new audio set over here. We're trying to check out for the first time. You're big time now, Keith. <laughs> Coach Gang, um, now you're in your sixth season. Mm -hmm. um, before that, obviously, you were the assistant coach for the men's basketball team. In these six seasons, what has it been like for you to take over a women's basketball program? Not over, just take over, but uh, turn this program into something prestigious. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, and uh, it's happened fast. Doesn't quite feel like six years or. Um, counting my years on the men's side a decade, which is, is pretty crazy. It makes me feel a little bit older than, than maybe what I am. Uh, but it, it's been a blast. And, and uh, you know, you mentioned kind of us uh, taking some steps forward in terms of winning, which is, has been fantastic. Um, the cooler part as I get a little bit older and more time in this is reflecting certainly on the teams with the kids that have gone through the program and, and now had a few years of um, groups that I've recruited, played for me for four seasons, and then starting to watch and um, see some of the things they do beyond their college years. And, uh, and so that part is, is most rewarding. But, yeah, certainly a lot of fun when you're, when you're playing well and winning games too. Talk about winning games. You've done that 90 times in your sixth season, 10 shy of 100, which is always something pretty eye-opening. Um, you guys have, have reached 18 wins in each of your last three seasons and 19 in two of your last three that in itself is pretty remarkable, including, obviously, the 2017 SAA Championship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we um, we talk a lot about it uh, as a group, and, and certainly my message to the kids a lot, and, and it's it's true, is that we really do sort of go one game at a time, and you've got to take a bigger picture um, on what you're – hoping your group looks like as the season wears on and you get into really sort of conference play and crunch time. Um, but you're also always looking at who's next, which game is next, and how do we get prepared for that one. So um, when you mentioned the, the total number of wins, it's, it's definitely neat to hear. But the way we, I think, have gotten to those is just by being prepared or trying to prepare as well as we can one at a time. And, and that's a practice at a time, a film session at a time, a uh, scout or a walkthrough or what it might be. So that message to the kids has been um, pretty consistent throughout those years, and it is cool to see it um, you know, add up to a, a certain number of wins and then obviously some successes. And, and you mentioned the, the conference championship, uh, that, that tournament year was pretty cool as well. You mentioned one at a time, so let's go back one game at a time and let's just look at the 2018-19 season as sure. a whole one game at a time. You guys started back in November, early November started, um, what has to be the shortest road game, technically road game, of the season, <laughs> yeah. exhibition opener against yep, UCA. Right across the street, almost. Yeah, sure. right across the street. You guys trailed by three after the opening quarter, fell not too bad to a Division One foe. Mm -hmm. What was the message like in the locker room after that game? Um, positive, extremely positive with a young, young group. And uh, at some point we'll probably touch on how many freshmen we truly have. So for that to be the first taste of, of real collegiate action, um, with our group, I was, was thrilled with some of the execution. <laughs> Certainly the effort was great. And, um, you know, we, we play that game as more of a tune-up and, and try to learn a lot about ourselves. And uh, you know, obviously UCA has had tremendous success. Uh, Coach Rushing does a great job. And, and it's a good, good test for us early in the year to be able to string together certain spurts in the game where I thought we competed and competed well and executed well. Um, try to take the positives from that. And, uh, you know, the loss is – you never want to say, hey, we lost and that's okay. But for our group to have done some things well in, in a big stretch, as you mentioned, in the first quarter, and I think um, we did things on both sides of the ball pretty well, I was happy and really just glad to have that experience um, initially before we started Division three play. The best thing about that loss is it actually didn't count. Sure. Exhibition opener, you guys Can, can they all be that way for I, coaches? Hey. That would be nice. <laughs> You guys traveled to Clarksville for the uh -huh. inaugural game of the season, season opener down against the Ozarks. Vanessa Daniels, sophomore guard out of Mountain Home, dropped what would then be a season high, 31 points. Great win against a great team. What was it like to get a big win on the road against the Ozarks? That it was fantastic. Again, first, first uh, true college game that counted for 
um, about 75% of our team and, and to go on the road. And um, in Clarksville, it's actually a really cool environment. Our, our road games there the last few years have been good tests in terms of um, a big crowd that is, is mostly pro, uh, pro Ozarks at the time. And so um, for us to squeak one out there and, and basically be in the game um, with four or five minutes to go and find a way to make enough plays down the stretch was great. And anytime you win any game, it's awesome. Road games are hard to come by, and, and they certainly have proven that way um, for years and years. And in the conference play for us, if you get them, um, I have a coaching friend that says they're like gold bars. And if you get a road win, and then, you know, fortunately, conference wise, we've had a few of those as well, um, it, it's pretty special to get it done. I was proud of the girls. I really was. You guys obviously improved the 1 0. Uh, following that victory, four days later, took on Sydney here in the opening game of the SCAC SAA Challenge. Daniel's season high, 31 points against Ozarks, was bested against that game as she dropped 38, which is a new season high, new career high, new program high. Mm -hmm. And she's just a sophomore, hasn't even finished half of her collegiate sure. play. Big, uh, another big win, improving it 2-0. to What was it like to get a big win against the ladies in that game? Uh, it was it was really well. They play a different style um, at the time, uh, playing a matchup zone, and so different from what we'd seen uh, from either of the two two uh, previous games. And as you mentioned, yeah, Vanessa was fantastic, and she was unbelievable in transition. And um, it's funny to say that I actually wasn't shocked that she's put up a total that high. Um, she's very dynamic. She's extremely difficult to keep in front, and I just remember transition-wise, she slashed to the bucket quite a bit um, and was able to turn the corner on a lot of ball screen stuff in their matchup zone. So um, she probably wishes she had a few free throws back. I think I remember she missed she missed six or eight of them, and, uh, and 40 would have been kind of cool. So, uh, But she's an unselfish kid. I think she was, was thrilled to do it and set the program record. But um, if you asked her, probably more, more glad that we won the game and, and uh, I thought that was good, too, for our group to, to build some momentum, you know, try to get a couple wins in a row there and, um, and bounce back. And, and now with as young as they were, especially at the start of the season, to, you know, win the Ozarks game, turn around, and then have to prep for another opponent. It's a brand-new concept for most of my team. Um, to be able to, to do that and, and sort of apply it I thought was, was great for them. 2-0 on the season at that point. You guys turn around and play your second game in the second consecutive day against the Austin College team who has been right around the top 25 mm -hmm. in the D3 Hoops poll. You guys fell in that contest against a really, really talented team. Well, what did it feel like after that loss, first loss of the year? Um, you know, disappointing when you lose, certainly, but uh, they are very good. Michelle does a great job with them. They have had some massive wins since then, and, and she has always, always put out a good team. She has a disciplined group that uh, is, is talented as well. Um, that was a game that uh, I, I thought we certainly could have played better. Um, you mentioned sort of a back-to-back -back is difficult with a young group and a th maybe a thinner roster or thinner um, depth-wise than what I'm used to having. Um, so we, we really kind of had to empty the gas tank. And it was really a, a tight ball game in about three, four minutes to go. I think we were um, down down three, down four, something like that. We came out of a timeout, executed a set, missed an open three, and they made it open three. And, and that kind of sealed it at that point. So, you know, sometimes it's a, a few plays in the guts of the game that swing it. And uh, we tried to take a positive um, spin and, and, you know, use the, um, some of the good things we did in that game. And, again, a, a very good team. And uh, so unfortunate for the loss, but – with a young team, we're trying to really take what's positive, what can we improve on, what did we do well, and send that message to the group as often as we can. After that loss, you guys face Sydney here, looking for the season sweep against the ladies. You guys beat them again for the second time in nine days. Followed that up with a loss against Ozarks, another team that you guys were looking for mm -hmm. the season sweep. You guys pretty much manhandled the Eagles for 30 minutes. You were outscored by nine in the fourth quarter. Was that just, uh, you know, maybe a freshman inexperienced uh, effort or what was it, you know, what was the cause of that? I, I think there's that a little bit of the youth probably showed there and it has in other spurts throughout the course of the year. Um, they they made shots, credit to Ozarks and their offense and their ability to spread the floor with four and most of the time five shooters. That can be difficult and when everybody's tossing them in, you got to really cover a lot of space defensively. And so um, I do remember that one being being pretty tight most of the way. I thought we did things early well. Um, foul trouble, I'm pretty sure, was an issue for us there late with some of our veterans. And so we were really trying to just uh, pull out all the stops and, and get it done. And, and unfortunately, we, 
came up a little bit short. So good win for them, certainly, after we had won there and they came back to, to get one here. So, um, But a good test. They're playing well in the AAC, and, um, and uh, Courtney does a good job with their, their group, too. So a um, lot of veterans on their team, and, and uh, I think that advantage showed a little bit in the matchup late in the game. After that loss, you guys hosted the second tournament in a couple of weeks mm -hmm. in the Henry's College Warrior Classic 2018. Beat a really, really good Southwestern Texas team. Completely dominated them for all 40 minutes. And then followed that up with an exciting, has to be one of the exciting games of this season, or at least one of them, against uh, Texas Lutheran. Jayla King, freshman, uh, just down the road from Mom Mel. Right over there, yeah, right over there. Uh, Mid-range buzzer beater yeah. uh, with – Point six seconds, I guess you want to say it, and they didn't even have any time to put up a shot to win by one. Last game before Christmas break, what uh, what impact did that shot have alone to propel you guys for the rest of the season thus far? Um, I think for us, actually, then the first kind of weekend sweep, so to speak, and then a back-to-back -back game, which can be difficult, um, we were able to to uh, play play really well against Southwestern and uh, and then turn around against the TLU team that's talented and always has a good program. Um, and to be able to get both of those, I think, for the girls was sort of like, yes, we're, we, we have the talent to get this done. Now we need to um, really buckle down and, and, uh, and be sharp, and our margin for error may not be as big as other teams. Uh, but if we are locked in, we can get it done night in and night out. And so I think that shot and the way that game, again, you mentioned, was, was pretty exciting. <coughs> so um, for it to finish like that is always a positive bump. Your kids feel really good. You know, we're heading into finals, I think, right after that. It's probably better to be on an emotional high than uh, an emotional low. So um, that, was, that was cool. It was, a, it was just It's exciting, you, you know. You coach all these games, and there's not always a – there's some you win by a lot, some you lose by a lot, certainly some that are close. Um, but for a kid to have a essentially a buzzer beater is a cool experience and something I think Jayla will remember for a long time. And so I'm, I'm, I'm glad she made it, and, and uh, I, I think um, she will, will remember that, and it's kind of a cool anecdote for her career. Now, the Southwestern Texas game wasn't the only game you guys dominated. You guys traveled to Dallas to take on University of Dallas. Completely, I mean completely, obliterated – uh, the Dallas team defeated them 64 to 45, but you led 39 to 13 at halftime. It seemed like nobody could miss during that game. What kind of game was that? Did that was that impacted off of that shot, carrying all the momentum? Uh, Five-hour road trip to Dallas. What, how, how did that feel? Uh, you know, we we did play well and we made shots, and we've had uh, other games where we haven't made some shots, and um, sometimes that. Uh, fuels everything else, fuels the defense, fuels the communication. Um, you'd like for your kids to always be as locked in in every facet of the game, regardless of how they actually shoot the basketball. But you're right, I think that probably did kind of boost us some from a, a momentum standpoint and intensity level. Um, you know, they, they beat us there last year, and I think some of our upperclassmen had a little bit of a um, – chip to try to chip on the shoulder to try to go get that one back and um, yeah for us to travel day of the game and, and hop off the bus and play well we sort of did speak about that leading into the game and how important we thought it was to start fast and I think we did and that set the tone um, but uh, yeah you know some nights things things just click for you and um, you know then you can turn around and not necessarily play very well which was the case the next night certainly so the next night you guys took on Austin College team again looking for your first one against them on the season in a meeting that has been pretty much 50-50. You guys have split, you know, the last mm -hmm. couple of seasons against a really, really talented team. And, again, that's a team that's near the top of the 25, been around, been inside the top 25 here a little bit this season. Um, you guys fell to them and then also would fall to Trinity. Two losses in a row. What was the mindset after, you know, not only the, the loss of the Roos but also the Trinity? The, the uh, loss at Austin was, was tough, and they shot it super well and again we mentioned the game for us where everything clicks well they had it going for them and and uh, um, so we had to pick ourselves up off the mat a little bit that was heading into um, winter break and so the girls had some time off I think we came back um, relatively refreshed mentally and certainly physically went down to San Antonio Trinity is a great program as well um, aside from a slow start we did some things um, did, th did things better as the game wore on and we tried to take that and, and build off of it for the following day with LC and another close game. I think that was overtime and um, cool to sneak those out. And anytime you can win those, um, you feel like the next time you get to a spot like that in a tight game, okay, we've been here, we've done this. And for our young team to kind of continue to have that, and you mentioned the TLU game or even the Ozarks game in Clarksville, to build off of some of those, this was just another instance where like, 
all right, we did enough things, made enough plays, get it to overtime, and uh, and now I feel like okay, girls, you can get it, you can get to this, you can do this, you can you can go play by play, possession by possession, and um, so cool to to go down there and get at least a split in those two games. You guys definitely, you know, you mentioned the split. It wasn't overtime, and again, it wasn't Jayla King having the game winner. It was Jayla King forcing right. overtime with right. a big, big three point shot. Talk about the freshman just having an impact. I mean. The yeah, way you sure. see her play, you think she's at least a junior or a senior. Yeah, she's um, physically got all of the tools and has um, displayed those well. Certainly made shots and big clutch shots, if you will. Um, I think maybe that the things that allows her to do that some is her mental um, capacity for the game. And if anything, it's, it's in practices, it's in film, it's in scout stuff where you see it click and she understands it. And that's a credit to her. Um, and so that I think allows the physical part to just happen and go play. And I think when she's made a handful of these um, bigger shots late in either regulation or overtime, um, she's not thinking as much or the wheels aren't spinning. She's just going to play. And, and I think it's because she has really locked in mentally um, throughout the course of the season. And that's allowed her to grasp a lot of um, the concepts that we're trying to get done in this program and um, you know, sort of the speed of the game, so to speak, at the college level. So. Um, yeah, fun kid to coach, and uh, and it obviously results have been been good for her. Can we pull this up just a tad? Sure. Thank you. Um, also in that game, uh, sophomore Kessie Jenkins, her first collegiate double double. Um, that's not only her first, but she also would go on to get another one later on. Talk about her production here lately. Yeah, she's Kessie been um, great, and I, I talk about a kid that I feel like has made a pretty big leap and taken advantage of a more playing time, bigger opportunity, you know, with our senior class last year and a, a handful of post players um, heading out the door. Kessie contributed uh, last season when it was a big part of it. Now there's a lot more in front of her, a lot more opportunity, and she really has kind of attacked that. And, and that's shown in terms of her stats and her numbers and, uh, and her impact. She's versatile enough, scores the ball in a couple of different ways. And, um, you know, competing on the glass, we're hoping our whole team does that, and she's kind of helped lead the charge that way. Yeah. The win against losing in college was the last non-conference game of the regular season for you guys. Opening up the season against Rhodes, uh, failed the Rhodes uh, SAL opener on the road. First game of the 2019 season. Bounced back two days later to defeat not only Swanee, but then center two days later after that. Again, mm -hmm. thanks to King, forcing overtime, uh, thanks to a three-pointer, nearly, you know, as time expires. And then you guys propel uh, to surpass center in overtime. Mm -hmm. Improved a 2 and one on the season in conference play. Thanks to Jayla King, sure. mostly, what's the mindset after that? You know, she made, uh, obviously, a big shot there, but uh, we had a lot of kids contribute, and, and um, either on the floor or off the floor, pre-game energy, practice stuff, practice reps. I mean, it, it truly is a team win every time, and um, we try to preach sort of an unselfishness in that regard. And Hendricks went 1-0 on Friday night in Sewanee, and Hendricks went 1-0 Sunday against center, not – you know, this individual did this or that. Certainly you have to have the kids make the plays, and I was proud of them for doing that. Um, to go two and one on a long swing, we made that trip all in, in one um, uh, one bus ride, basically, yeah. essentially, um, to go in, into Memphis and then on to Suwannee and then the, into Kentucky for the center game. So um, to come out of that, uh, that's really our, our truly our first kind of big road swing and um, in conference, especially to come out two and one, I was pretty pleased. I, I think we played well or did things well in all three games. Um, you know, you'd love to have them all, but Rhodes is a good program and really hard to beat in Memphis. Um, so we were able to bounce back from that, which I was proud of. And uh, not often do you get what we would call a road sweep and you win two of the Friday-Sunday games in the SAA because there's too many good teams, too many tough environments, too many good coaches in our league. And um, that's hard to do. I was actually really, really impressed with, with um, the team's response to Wednesday's loss and uh, being able to go get those two. Another overtime game. Those are fun. Happens all the time when we go to center. Field, so. <laughs> the win against Swanee, uh, junior guard Amber Turner knocked in a, a career high 19 points, which is pretty remarkable. And then also not only her, but also uh, Rachel Waltman had a career high 12 points, three to three from the floor, two to two from deep. Um, those two in itself having a career high at Swanee. Big win, first win of the season mm -hmm. in conference play. We Talk about, it. you know, yeah. Turner being one of you two uh, players that were a part of that 2017 mm -hmm. SAA championship. Talk about, I guess, maybe your senior leadership with uh, Amber Turner and Maddie Anderson. Sure. So, um, you know, that game specifically, Amber was great in transition, finished a lot of stuff um, at the basket. Sawani was picking the pace up, forcing us to play quickly, and um, 
when you get a lead, sometimes it's difficult to understand when's a good time to attack and when's a good time to pull the gas uh, back a little bit. And, and Amber did a great job mentally of figuring out when to go, when to get to the basket. And she was um, really, really good at finishing and finishing in traffic in that game. And I think she hit a few from the outside as well. So um, having her step up offensively in that game was great. She has really kind of been the kid that leads the charge for us defensively, usually gets one of the toughest defensive assignments, if not the toughest kind of night in and night out for us. I know she leads the team in minutes. I mean, her, her basketball impact and her experience we lean on a lot. Um, whether it's a box score game that shows up that way or not, um, somebody that as a coach you really appreciate having we can get you out there for 35, 36. I think she played 40 minutes in a couple games this year. So um, to be able to kind of get a kid out there that's done it and been through some of the battles um, with you is uh, is fantastic. And then you, you touched on Maddie um, being my one senior who's really been through it all. She put up with me for three years, I guess, if you will, and, and is now in the fourth year. So um, she has watched our program have tons of success, as you mentioned. I don't I think it's 18, 19, 18, and wherever the heck we wind up getting to this year. So um, – there's a reason for that, and that that's kids in your program that buy in every single day. And um, with a young group, we really do count on her so much to uh, <coughs> actually be the same person every day, show up and compete, show up and communicate, show up and, um, you know, push through a day or two or three straight days of practice, whatever it might be, and set that example. Um, so having, a, having at least one senior, one junior has been good. Um, for us and, and setting that example for our young kids. And yeah, you mentioned Rachel in the Suwannee game too. Um, we went small that game, foul trouble, a lot of different stuff. That was a game where we sort of threw everything, including the kitchen sink at, uh, at Suwannee, <laughs> whatever we had left. And uh, to get kids to step up in big spots was pretty cool. 12 points in 10 minutes, perfect from the floor. That's mm -hmm. pretty pretty hard to beat, pretty remarkable in itself. All right, you guys, you know, 2-1 in the conference. Come back to Grove Gymnasium, open up SAA play here. 2-1 record in the conference. Fall to Millsaps, fall to BSC. Millsaps, you guys, I guess, are pretty much down early in the game, outscored the majors 22-11 to 11 in the fourth quarter, but it's a little bit too late. And then you take on BSC. You're up by three at the halftime, but the Panthers outscored you guys 43-27. to 27. Was that the BSC game, was that pretty much a, a young depth? Or not young depth, but a young roster issue? A little bit, yeah. But, but we just are, I think our youth showed some, and um, – credit to BSC and their kids and, and they made shots um, they went and got one of those road sweeps which is really hard to do so um, Mike's had some good good programs and, and our teams have kind of had a, a back and forth quite a bit too so it's usually a tight ball game he does a good job they're disciplined they run really good stuff and um, and made some adjustments I think as the game went on so credit to their program on that I don't feel like um, you know hey we we lost and and there was certainly things we could do better but I don't feel like it was just super negative post game. We just we didn't play particularly well late after having yes played played pretty good um, to that point. And the Friday Millsaps game, uh, I hope we never shoot the ball that poorly <laughs> again. Some of it Millsaps kind of forced us into, and uh, other ones where I know those kids can make those shots. And and uh, so, not what you want to do and drop into at home. Certainly, um, I do think y as you touched on a little bit, that's part of the youth showing, but. We're into January. We're going to be hopping into February here soon. Soon, um, I, I don't want to continue to say, hey, well, we're, we're young and that's okay. Yes, it is and, um, in the grand scheme of things, but we want to compete every night out. And, uh, and I think we've been able to do that regardless of results. So we're hoping that continues. Two big games this weekend. Friday we take on Barry 6 o'clock here on this court mm -hmm. before taking on Sunday in – you got to be looking forward to Sunday, but I know you got the one nah, game at Keith, time. time. Rematch of the 2018 the SAA championship game. That, but yeah. 12 o'clock against Oglethorpe. You guys lost 70-69 to in overtime. I guess let's talk about the Barry game first, a little bit of a preview. Yeah, Barry um, coming off a win, a uh, talented group. And um, they, they uh, Coach Johnson does a good job with, with them because they are um, – really let their kids put their kids in good spots to be successful in the stuff that they do on both sides of the basketball and I feel like every every year there are stretches where Barry's program gets in a groove and plays really really well um, at big points in the season and uh, I think they're there right now and I think he probably would would say the same as they've played well and beat center um, last week at home and so um, we, we got some things we have to do well basketball wise for us to try to 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 squeak one out and, um, you know, 
we're hoping again uh, pick ourselves up off the mat bounce back be nice to be be at home still uh, students are back on campus classes started again this week so I, we hope we get a little bit of a, a momentum boost from that standpoint as well um, and and want to play well regardless of result and then uh, yeah you mentioned Sunday with Oglethorpe coming in I mean we will uh, scheme wise work on that later uh, you know Saturday Saturday evening Sunday maybe shoot around and things like that but they're talented they've got this virtually the same team coming back um, save for one or two kids from last year's championship so um, you know they, they probably are a team that feels like they're getting everybody's best shot every night with the target on their back and um, you know we have been there a little bit as a program too so um, I, I think coach Richie does a great job his kids play hard all the time so we, we got two tough ones this weekend and um, hopefully we can get better and and learn some things about ourselves it's always nice to win and learn <laughs> as opposed to not getting to win and, and still learning some things about your team last thing right here tell the viewers one thing about yourself that they might not know who uh good i mean you didn't even tell me this was coming uh, hey, no that's okay um i got two young kids myself a four-year-old my son brady and and uh, my daughter blair is two and uh, my wife melody so i'm um, Starting my young family here, balancing the basketball stuff at the same time. And I come from a big athletic family myself. I'm one of six. So um, the uh, competitiveness and, and that fire that I hope is, is evident in, in the way I approach kind of my sideline um, prep and things like that it comes from a lot of that and, and in my makeup. So I, I credit to, to my, my folks and my family. And, uh, yeah, I hope that's what you're looking for. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. That's perfect. No, that's <laughs> perfect. That's perfect. All right, this has been it. This has been the first ever 2019 season or 2019 year Henry Warriors Coaches Show. We'll see you guys next week. Thank Thanks, you. Coach. Thanks, Keith. All right, how do you do, man? Good. Nice.